Uh, Todd Schoenberg joins us right now, as he does often, from San Antonio, Texas, Managing Director of Land Cold Trading. Good to see you again, Todd. Thanks for having me back on. Want to talk oil here in a little bit and what's going on just uh, not too far from your location right there in the Gulf. But let's talk about what uh, you're seeing with this market. As I mentioned, we're down now. You know, getting uh, uh, we could be closing, you know, 400 points to the down in the last three days, you know, as we're headed there. I mean, what do you make of the action right now on Wall Street? Well, after Monday's uh, rally, and Monday should not, should not have been a big surprise. If you look back just at the past year, the first trading day of the week, when it coincides with the first trading day of the month, the markets have actually gone up 90% of the time. So statistically, Monday was going to be an up day. But following that, though, then, now you're starting to look at fundamentals. You know, A lot of the traders are really starting to focus on earnings, starting to look at some of that economic data that's out there. Obviously, Greece is a big concern. So if anything, equity investors should be prepared for a lot of volatility from here on out, especially with the higher gas prices that, uh, that we're, we should be expecting this summer. And then the earnings reports, and obviously the retail sales numbers coming out today, very benign. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be bullish, but <laughs> I think we should, be, uh, we should be prepared for some volatility from here on yeah, out. Yeah, you're not selling that bullish stance there, by the way. But so here's the thing. You got all these people saying, uh, I knew it was coming, uh, you know, and we have pundits on here all the time. I told you the market was going to fall and look there it is. But did you tell me it was going to fall because of Greece? Did people really anticipate that this whole Greek contagion that we keep using, uh, the word we keep using, was going to affect our market so heavily? Well, when you look at Greece, you start talking about Europe, and obviously with the debt concerns that are there, if it's going to spread. Now you have Portugal on a, ra on a, uh, a ratings watch, and now you have some issues with Spain. So when you look at the Eurozone altogether, how will that impact U.S. companies? What they're looking at now is really international growth for our companies and when you start looking at earnings will that be impacted and then what type of a bailout are we looking at you know bottom line is the common denominator from everything is jobs you need jobs and you need people working again and just today we had first-time jobless claims of 444,000 that's awful when you start looking at this where we should be in this recovery right now so you need people working and you see that in the retail sales number today and obviously that's going to have a negative impact on earnings down the road so trade you know, investors are probably looking, hey, you know what, they want to stay on the sidelines right now. And with that said, uh, what do you expect to see tomorrow morning with the uh, non-farmers payroll report, Todd? And what number will move the market higher or lower? How big of a disappointment or a surprise to the upside do we need for the market to really raise eyebrows? Okay, well, Wall Street consensus right now is looking for 187,000. I predict we're going to cross 200,000, but I think the bulk of that's going to be from those census workers. When you look at the March figures, when you, when you look at those jobs numbers, they were actually decent, and only less than 25% were actually from census workers. So going forward for, this, for the month of April, I think the bulk of those census workers were hired during that month. But that, on the surface, will look good, but once you start getting into the weeds and the details of this thing, that it's not going to be good because most of these workers are temp workers. And then you look at first-time jobless claims just last month. We went through two straight weeks where we actually beat Wall Street consensus on the first-time jobless mm. number. And then today, 444,000. So I'm not optimistic because I think people still need to get back to work, and we're just not seeing it right now. So then what happens? We're, we're going to have you know, this back and fill for a while, or are we gonna, is this the beginning of somewhat of a descent for us? Okay, well, you're going to have a tug of war between the bulls and the bears. That's a given. So, if anything, you're going to have intense volatility, a lot of trading uh, that's going to be taking place in the markets. But as far as the overall economy, the broader economy, I think, and this is going to get you, I think we're in, we are at risk for a double-dip recession. And I'll tell you why. Because, one, the home buyer tax credit has expired. So now you have a housing sector with a number of foreclosures that are supposed to hit the sector. I think you have a housing sector that can really take a uh, step back. Employment, who's hiring right now? Banks are not lending. You know, Tracy, you said it best at the opening. People are not able to get loans, and they're not able to get loans. If companies can't get loans, and they can't hire. So I think we're at risk right now. I think you need this president to step up. He's got to show some leadership, and he's got to say that, hey, you know what? Things are going to be fine, but maybe take a look at some of those tax policies that 
are threatening the uh, the growth of the U.S. economy. Todd, what do you make of uh, these oil companies? I, I know it's really close to home, hits close to home with you there in Texas, but you had BP losing, what, $30 billion in market cap. You had Transocean down 21% from April 20th, the date of the accident. Is that too far, or do you think these companies still have a lot further to go in terms of their equity uh, price? BP and Transocean have a lot further to go on the downside. I mean, for a couple of reasons. One, we're just talking about the cleanup costs for this thing. There is, I'm seeing estimates of $14 billion right now. But I think once you start looking at, at the litigious matters, once you start seeing the Attorney General coming into town, some of these lawyers representing the states, the coastlines, I think they're in a lot of trouble for years to come. But when you look at the big oil companies, I'm still going to be a fan. I started thinking of the Exxon Mobiles, the Conocos, the Chevrons. These are companies that do not have the history that a BP has. And what I mean by that is they don't have the maintenance problems, the safety issues. I mean, it, this is a common occurrence with BP, and, and we, we've seen this over the years, but you don't see that with the Exxons and the Chevrons and the Conocos. So I still believe you're going to have worldwide demand. You're, you will see economic um, uh, growth around the world and therefore increased demand for crude oil. So I'm going to be bullish on that side, but you've got to pick and choose your spots when it comes to the oil sector. That's why we love having you here. You help us pick and choose. Todd Schoenenberger, Managing Director of <laughs> Land Colt Trading. Thanks for being with us, sir.